Rose. I am the pastor here at First Baptist Alabaster. I think I need to introduce myself because there are a lot of new faces. It's always a great night of worship. We have a lot of folks from the community and some friends and family who come uh, to celebrate keyboards by candlelight. I was talking to the group in the back. There seems to be some debate. This is either our 17th or 18th year uh, to do this, and it's always uh, a special time for the First Baptist Alabaster family as we kick off Christmas, and, uh, and so thank you for joining us with that. You know, Christmas comes around every year, so uh, there's a, a lot of different celebrations, and a lot of them are, are very similar, and this is one of the unique, I think, celebrations. I don't know of any other church who does keyboards by candlelight, and uh, at least in our immediate area, and so it's one of the things I think that uh, helps our church uh, carve out a unique uh, ministry here in this area. And I do want to call your attention before I lead us in a word of prayer. If you look on the back of your bulletin, you'll see uh, several different items of upcoming events. Uh, Winter Wonderland or Wonderland Christmas Festival, that's uh, taking place this Wednesday. We'll pack this, uh, this place out, put the parking lot out. And it looks like we actually might have some winter weather this year. I think it was 75 degrees last year uh, for Wonderland. And so we're looking forward to being able for the kids to play in the snow and it actually not melt as they play in it. Uh, and then uh, next Sunday evening, our adult choir, along with our children, will be presenting the uh, Christmas celebration. Uh, that's next Sunday night. And then another thing that's a little different than we do at First Baptist Alabaster, and that's on the uh, Christmas Eve, we have the silent Lord's Supper. And if you're wondering what that is, it's exactly what it says. Uh, you get to come to church and not have to hear a sermon. So uh, every year I have some people say, you know, Pastor Steve, that's my favorite service of the year. <laughs> and uh, so we will observe uh, communion and uh, have a wonderful time of just uh, hearing some praise music. And it's just a little different from all the different celebrations that take place at Christmas to, uh, to be quiet and kind of do what the scripture says that Mary did, where it says that she pondered these things in her heart. And uh, the silent Lord's Supper is a wonderful way for us to do that. But tonight we're here for Keyboards by Candlelight. We've got the most pianists that we have ever had that are participating. So we're excited about that. And uh, I'm going to lead us in a word of prayer and pray for God's blessing and anointing on this service tonight. And again, thank you so much for celebrating with us this evening. Oh, one thing before we pray. We uh, make this free to the, uh, to the public, but we do take love offerings. We have, we used to pass the plate. We don't do that anymore. I think COVID killed passing the plate. Although on the silent Lord's Supper, we are going to do the traditional Lord's Supper where we're going to pass the plate and you got to pick your bread in the, in the cup and we'll do it the, uh, the way we used to do it. But we do have collection boxes. Somebody said they look like suggestion boxes, which they're fine. I just suggest you put money in them. And uh, <laughs> if you can uh, help offset the cost, it is quite expensive to rent uh, the pianos for this event. And so if you can help offset that cost and it's been a blessing to you, uh, whatever you can give, we would greatly appreciate it. And those offering boxes are located in the hallways and you can see them, they're labeled. Uh, so you'll know which, which ones to drop the money in. But let's go to the Lord in prayer. <laughs> Almighty God, in the name of Jesus, we bow in your presence. And we thank you most of all for the gift of eternal life made possible in the sending of your son. We pray tonight as he is worshipped through song that we would be encouraged. That the saints of God would be lifted up and encouraged. And we pray for even those that don't know Christ for their soul to be drawn closer to you tonight. Lord, I pray for these pianists, and I ask that your hand of favor to rest upon them, that you would anoint them, that you would use them as your instrument of praise tonight. Use them for your glory. We commit this service to you in Jesus' name. Amen. My name is Daniel Jenkins. I'm the minister of music here at First Baptist Church in Alabaster. And on behalf of all the folks behind me, thank you so much for choosing to worship with us tonight. If you would, stand to your feet. They're going to lead us. Let's sing joy to the world. The Lord has come. Two. Ready. Let's lift our voices tonight. Joy to the world. Joy to the world.
Thank you so much for being with us tonight. You can be seated. And if you would, help me welcome to the platform this evening the 14 pianist for Keyboards by Candlelight.
time of year that you greatly look forward to. Family Christmas traditions help create some of the most precious memories that we hold on to for a lifetime. In our family, we have several traditions that uh, we have done for many years, some that Amber and I did prior to us getting married, as well as others that we've started with our own kids since we got married. Traditions like opening up only one, just one present on Christmas Eve. Of course, all the moms can echo this one, putting the kids in matching Christmas pajamas. Advent calendars with your kids, all of those things. Some of those are so, the, the biggest highlights of this Christmas season at our house. Corey, do you guys have any traditions that you take part in this time of year? Yeah, we, we certainly do. Um, we always exchange ornaments <coughs> uh, with one another to commemorate something that we did that year. Um, our family also loves Christmas movies. Uh, so we make it a point to watch Home Alone, which is Carrie's favorite movie. I watched that today. Yeah, And It's a Wonderful Life, which is my favorite movie. Uh, one other tradition that our family has always done together is to sit down and to read the Christmas story from Luke chapter 2 together. These family traditions are things that we look forward to with great anticipation each year. Traditions definitely are one thing that make the Christmas season so special. Like you guys... One tradition that we have made sure to prioritize in our family every year is the reading of the Christmas story from Luke chapter 2 as a family. This is something that what my family has done for as long as I can remember, and Amber and I made it a point to continue that tradition when we got married, especially now that we have children. Would you join us now as we read the Christmas story from Luke chapter 2? In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. And she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly hosts appeared with the angel praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told.
There are many aspects of the Christmas season that I love, but at the top of the list is the Christmas music. I look forward to, forward to hearing and singing along to some of my favorite songs of the season, both sacred carols and as well as many other songs that so eloquently portray the beauty of this time of year. One of my favorites is Jingle Bells. Um, but you know, I'm really excited to hear one played tonight that I've never heard before, Foom, Foom, Foom. As a matter of fact, uh, when you sent me the, the song list, I thought he misspelled fun, fun, fun. His response, he said, fun, fun, fun. I said, no, no, no. I couldn't understand why we were playing a Beach Boy song at Christmas. <laughs> hey, but you can't forget, of all the songs that we've mentioned, the, the, the Jingle Bells, foom, 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 you can't forget the Charlie Brown classic, Oh, Christmas Tree. But uh, even that one, my personal favorite, though, is that I've loved for as long as I can remember, is Sleigh Ride. I love Sleigh Ride. It's not Christmas until I hear Sleigh Ride. And I hear the pianist have a different twist on that song that we've never experienced as, uh, at Keyboards by Candlelight this year. So we'll have to see what they have in store for us. Let's listen, though, as they play some classics of the season, including Foom, 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 which Corey will love hearing for the first time. And beginning with an old favorite that bears the title that all children... And some adults might wish we would wake up to this Christmas morning, White Christmas.
All right, the jury's out. How'd you like Foom Foom Foom? It's okay. I like Fun 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 better though. Was <laughs> was Foom 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 Fun Fun Fun? Yes, it was. Well, good, good, good. <laughs> what about Sleigh Ride? I like the Sleigh Ride. Yeah, I like the addition. What was your favorite part? Um, I, I would say the the horse, the trumpet. I'll give you that. And I'll give you that. That was a cool little twist that we yeah, threw in yeah. this year. I liked it. You know, hearing those favorite uh, favorites take me back to my childhood, uh, where I would always watch a Charlie Brown Christmas with Linus and Lucy gathering around the Christmas tree singing Oh Christmas Tree together. That was always a highlight of Christmas for me every year. I would always wake up and hope to uh, wake up on Christmas to a white Christmas. Uh, but then I remembered I lived in Andalusia, Alabama, <laughs> a place that snow doesn't know exists, except the blizzard of 93. Blizzard of 93. Who, who remembers blizzard of 93? How Blizz about Snowmageddon in 2014? 2014, yes. yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, there are a few exceptions, but yes, snow does not frequent South Alabama. Well, I call it L.A., Lower Alabama, uh, very often. Uh, but I'm with you. A white Christmas was certainly something that I dreamt of waking up to as a kid. But we'd get snow around here but never a white Christmas. But thinking back on all those memories as a kid reminds me of something that my mom would always tell us. She'd say, there, we must believe in the spirit of Christmas. Amber and I are teaching this very thing to Emily and, and James, and we will with Lizzie as she gets older as well. But what we're teaching them is what the spirit of Christmas is truly all about. We've done the same thing with Braley. We have and continue to teach her that we believe in the spirit of of this time of year and what we celebrate. We believe in the spirit of giving unto others. We believe in the spirit of joy that comes with all the activities we enjoy around the Christmas holiday. But most importantly, we believe in the true reason for the season, the birth of Christ the Lord. That's right. The reason we celebrate and enjoy all the fun activities around this time of year, including nights like tonight, is simply this, the birth of our Savior. We celebrate the coming of the King and what that means for us as followers of Christ. Corey and I have one question for you tonight. Do you believe? Do you believe? Do you believe that Jesus Christ was born of a virgin and laid in a manger? Do you believe that he was born to save the world from their sins? Do you believe that he lived a perfect and sinless life? Do you believe that Christ Jesus gave himself, uh, gave of his life upon the cross to pay your sin debt and mine? so that we might be able to spend eternity with him. If you don't believe, if you've never given your life to Christ, may today be the day of salvation for you. Will you do as the wise men did? Will you come unto him? I can promise you one thing. The church, the universal church and this body of believers will rejoice with you and the angels will shout for joy over someone coming to the saving knowledge of Christ. What better way to kick off the Christmas season? That's right. When you can truly say you believe that you have come unto him, knowing he will give you rest for your soul, we all have something to rejoice over. Listen to our pianists as they play a medley of songs simply entitled, Come Unto Him.
That truly is our prayer this Christmas season, that we would all come unto him, both individually and collectively, that the lost might come unto him for salvation, that those who are already followers of Christ would be reminded of our dependence upon the Lord Jesus in every aspect of our lives. May we all come unto him and rejoice this Christmas for who he is and for all he has done for us. May we rejoice in what the birth of Jesus means for us as believers in Christ as well as servants in his kingdom. You know, of all the descriptions of the Christmas season, I think one that truly sums it up simply is this. Christmas is a season of joy. As Christians, the birth of Jesus is a joyful event. The coming of the Christ child, the one who would save uh, the world from their sins, is what we celebrate at Christmas. And that should bring us joy. As the classic Christmas carol reminds us, joy to the world, the Lord has come. May our hearts be filled with joy this Christmas season because of what the birth of Jesus means for us. Despite whatever trial or circumstances you may be facing, that may not be a cause for joy. May you cling to the joy that comes with knowing Christ and the celebration of his birth. May we, as the old hymn says, be joyful as we come and adore the Savior. Listen now as Karen and Jan beautifully play a familiar tune, Improvisation on Ode to Joy.
While they're sitting right there, would you help me thank the First Baptist Alabaster accompanists, Betty Ansley and Karen Morgan tonight? Yes. For those of you who are here tonight visiting with us, we get to enjoy that every single Sunday. And they make my job a breeze when it comes to picking music. There's nothing I can pick that I can't put in front of them. So from me to them, thank you, thank you, thank you. Fantastic job, ladies. And thank you uh, so much for choosing to spend a portion of Christmas season with us here at First Baptist Alabaster. This is one of our favorite traditions of the Christmas season, one we look forward to with immense anticipation each year. We sincerely hope that you have had a wonderful evening as we have heard Christmas favorites beautifully performed by these incredibly talented musicians. Would you help me thank them once again? And from all of us, from all of us here at First Baptist Alabaster, we really would like to wish you a very Merry Christmas. We would pray uh, that you would experience the true joys of this season and a fresh touch from the Lord Jesus as we celebrate his birth. We leave you with a simple message tonight. Oh, magnify the Lord. This Christmas season, amidst all the hustle and bustle that comes along with it, may we magnify the Lord in all that we do. In the stressful moments preparing for the next event, in the down times with family around the table, and everywhere in between, may we magnify the Lord. Psalm 34 puts it this way, Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. This Christmas, may we heed the words of David in that psalm, and truly magnify the Lord.
Have you had a good night tonight? Yes, praise the Lord. Thank you so much for choosing to worship with us here at First Alabaster on behalf of these musicians behind me. Thank you so much for being with us. We hope you have a very Merry Christmas and that you choose to be back with us for the other events we have throughout the rest of the month. But tonight, would you help me thank them one more time? May the Lord bless you and keep you and cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. From all of us here at First Alabaster, Merry Christmas. You are dismissed. Yes! <laughs>